2020 investment strategies. Today we're going to talk about investment strategies for 2020, particularly for the Toronto condo real estate investors and the Ontario condo real estate investors and the Ontario real estate investors. Okay, Yossi Kaplan here, Toronto real estate agent, mortgage broker, research with this mortgage. So I'm going to use Loom. Uh, so it's got the little uh, circle here. I think once I move a window, it's going to go, but let's go. So Yossi Kaplan here, Toronto real estate agent, mortgage broker with search with this search mortgage, the condo calculator. Go here, download it, and figure out if your investment will break even or not, if you'll make money on it, how much you will. Um, obviously, big disclaimer, everything I say here is not investment advice. Do your homework, call your accountant, call your lawyer, do the work, call your CFA, whatever. I'm here to share information I learned with you and hopefully it helps everyone. So, Yossi Kaplan here, uh, youtube.com slash Yossi Kaplan. This is my YouTube channel. Thank you everyone, everyone for uh, signing, subscribing, commenting, liking, disliking. It's all good, it's all helping. This channel is growing leaps and bounds. Uh, really good um, there's a there's a there's um that window's back uh this is ray dalio on the right and this is uh patrick bet david on the left who's got uh, a very popular channel called value team and 1.68 million subscribers and ray dalio is a very very famous guy super smart uh founder of bridgewater huge investor he's he's kind of a common sense no nonsense kind of guy and watching him give you a whole other perspective on what he's talking about now obviously he's american he's talking about america but everything that happens down there affects us twitter.com says jesse kaplan is where i post all the new stuff so if you want to just get the quick update just go on the, on uh twitter you get everything you need right here uh, i post whatever i can from the phone directly i may not be able to post everything to the blog um torontoconnorsforsale.com um, is where you get the information i have a whole list here of pre-construction uh, just hit this button, pre-construction condos, and we'll show you whatever is available. And we're going to dive into this a little more because I want to talk to you about is it safe still to invest in pre-construction today and the investment strategies for the pre-construction investor uh, because that, that that's a real big deal. Um, if you want to see, um, I'm running through the tabs here before I'm going to start talking so you kind of get all the tools in place right away and then you can follow up with me. Uh, you will see the search with the code slash home value slash estimator. Uh, you put an address here. And it'll basically take you take you to the address, and you can you can tell it uh, what's going on here. It'll, it'll bring up a map of the property. Tell I got a one bedroom, two bath. Give it all the information. Confirm that, and I'll get an email from you, and I'll do a home valuation for you. Okay, that's free. There's no cost, and I can usually do the same day next day. YossiKaplan.com is where I post uh, uh, deeper insights about assigning, investing. Uh, more assignment projects, more investing projects, all the videos have been posted here as well, so you won't miss anything. Uh, UrbanRealtyToronto.com is where you get all this, all the big data. There's over 1,500, 1,500 articles in here. Uh, goes back over 10 years, so there's a lot of data here, a lot of information here. Okay, so we're going to start with the condo calculator. Will your investment break even? So, you know, when, when I look, I'm condos.ca here. And when you come to condos.ca, and do it with me right now, okay, condos.ca, put downtown, okay, and hit that, and I'm going to show you something really crazy right now, right as we start. So the crazy thing is that when we look at downtown, you know, it's going to give you all these things. Here's the analytics right here. Hit the analytics, and what you're going to see is the condo values, and this is, uh, condos.ca was down for a couple of days, so I don't know if they restored all the, all the data. It seemed like they have. And uh, but it's quite dynamic. So 5.5 percent uh, year over year change of values, which is good. It's reasonable. We don't want to see 20 or 25 percent here like we did years before. And the average dollar per foot is 982 for all these areas together. All these areas together, 982. So just on a thousand. Um, some are more, some are less, obviously. And that's you know one bedroom or three will be much higher, and three bedroom will be much lower. Okay. And you can see here. Uh, here it says 986. So maybe they're reading from different places. Uh, but it's pretty close and you can see the big jump we had you know 2015 only four years ago we were at two-thirds of this price so we came up we came up by uh almost 50 percent in four years that is insane okay 603 dollar per foot 669 831 look at this jump here 929 that's almost a hundred dollar a foot and uh, another sixty dollar a foot and we'll see what happens next year on the rents it's not that fast and that's something you got to pay attention to 2015 you know we saw here that 2015 is where it started to bounce right the big jump from here that's a full 10 percent here that's even more 10 percent but look at the rents they don't come up that fast so 
you know, I came by uh, 14 last night, so 23 cents here. That's about 10% here. That's about 10% here, and that's just a couple points here. So the rents can follow up to a point, and then they're starting to even out at the $4 a foot. The $4 a foot is where the rents start evening out, but the prices of the condos themselves are not. They keep going up. What is going on? So let's let's take a look at here, okay? So let's take a look. Uh, let's dive deeper, and I'll show you what I mean. Um, and then I'll give you some strategies for investing in 2020 because that's what we're here for. Okay, so if I look at all these neighborhoods here, you know, I like to pick on King West because that's my uh, stomping grounds, King West, Queen West, all the downtown really. Uh, let me see if I can just get to it faster, just type King West. Noisy the cafe today. Uh, King West, condos.ca, what do you got for me? The line's running. Uh, it should come at around a thousand dollars a foot. It was yesterday. It was about nine eighty-eight thousand dollar a foot. Okay, Connors that is having a problem today. I'll go back to the downtown area, and we'll just use this. You know, this is a live recording. I don't edit them, so it is what it is. Um, but nine eighty-six. So look at this, nine eighty-six a foot. Okay, and uh, the rent. Uh, say four dollar foot. Now I'm going to jump to the condo calculator. To come here, put your name, your email. I'm not a robot. You will uh, be sent the link to the spreadsheet here, which you then download and put it back in your Google Sheets, Apple Numbers, Excel, or Open Office, whatever you use. Okay, but that's how it works. Uh, if you're not putting your real email here, you're just not going to get the email. I've seen a couple of, like weird emails. I don't know. If it's maybe it's a real email, maybe not, but it will send you. It's automatic. You know, I don't have to do it. It's going to happen anyways. So um, let's say here I have, a, I have a unit. Let's say I have a 500 square feet unit. And uh, I'm going to bring the calculator up. And uh, let's see 500 times 982, just to play averages, 491. Now, you're not going to find, you're not going to find a unit uh, King West at 491. We'll just leave it at 500 for $1,000 uh, a foot. And in case of 20% down, that's 100000 uh, available for investment. Okay. So you're looking at if you buy in pre-construction, it's uh, four uh, payments of twenty-five to all hundred thousand, and your mortgage is four hundred thousand. Okay, so you enter the information in yellow, and you get the results in the green. Um, if you wanted to put a larger deposit, and it's regardless if it's a uh, pre-construction or you buy in resale, you can just add it in one of these slots here. Say I want to throw ten percent more, fifty thousand more. Now I increase my deposit and I reduce my mortgage requirements, so obviously my numbers will change. But let's start with uh, the classic uh, 2080. So here we are. And then we'll estimate the uh, condo calculator. We'll give you some estimates. So here are the monthly expenses for this uh, condo, and I'm, I'm here on this right here, okay? So 80 cents a foot, $400 uh, a month. That's more or less realistic for what you'd pay these days. For a building existing, a new building may be a little less. Let's say it's uh, 0 0.65, 325. You know, yourself. So some, let's take like a, let's say 0 0.7. Okay, so you're paying 350 a month for that condo. It's a little cheap, but whatever. And your municipal tax about 375. That makes sense. I mean, usually we count one percent, but I think the city itself gives you a bit of discount. So I'll be, I'll be very generous today. It's Friday, you know. Uh, and the mortgage at three percent. Let's be even generous more, and I'll say you get the mortgage for 2.8 percent. And that's based on 25-year amortization. That's 25 times 12, the 300 uh, months to pay. And that's what's happening here. So the total carrying cost for this condo is going to be $2,600 a month for 500 square, 500 square feet condo at, at this rate, at $1,000 a foot. You're going to need 2600 a month. Now, how much are you getting for this condo? You're getting 4 bucks a foot, maybe a little more. So 500 times 4, that's 2000 That's what I have here. So... Once you come to the um, cash flow analysis, and I went through this in detail in previous videos, so I'm running through it. But if you want more detail, just go to the videos. I'll show you exactly where it is. Uh, come the calculator, and all these three here really like go through a lot of detail about using this thing and a lot of tricks. So go there. But if you have two thousand here, you're basically like short six hundred dollars a month. That's a problem. The annual cash flow is uh, short by seven thousand a month, and you're losing seven percent your annual ROI. And ROI in this case is um, it's a net, net, net ROI. Does not include any extra expenses. Does not include uh, vacancy. Does not include any of that stuff. Okay, just net, net, net. Cash on cash, what we call in business school. 
And again, not investment advice, just to help you figure it out a little bit. So what happens here, if this condo is losing money, if I were to get, say, 2200 and I could use my uh, cost a little bit, and how would I really do it? I, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's, more or less, that's more or less what I'm going to pay for this condo. The only way I can really reduce it is by uh, adding, adding more money down. So, you know, whether it's uh, I added an occupancy because I took a new construction unit or I'm buying resale, I'm just, I'm just putting 50000 more. So now I reduce my cost by about 150 bucks, and I'm only losing $161 a month. That's not bad, okay? That's okay. That's a, a small cost to pay, and I'm okay with that. But once you're looking at, you know, three or four or $500 a month uh, negative cash flow, that becomes a problem. So what can you do? You need to buy cheaper. So let's go here, and let's say I buy the same uh, one bedroom condo, 500 square feet, but this time I only paid for it because let's say I'm going to buy this um, maybe not in the core, so maybe I find this condo for uh, 425 In a lesser area, I'm just going to move out. Let's say even I, I bought it 850 a foot. Let's say I got it for 400000 So I paid 800 a foot, and that may be in Hamilton. Hamilton's cheaper, but maybe the small condos, dollar, higher dollar per foot. Uh, maybe I went out to Oakville, you know, any any of these places. And I have, if you're looking for these, you know, I got 36 Zora for you, I got Hamilton for you, I got Ancaster, I got Kitchener, Guelph, Waterloo. They have a lot of nice stuff for the six and seven hundred dollar foot. We'll look at that in a second. So now my deposit required at uh, 20% is uh, 80,000, a little less because I'm paying 100 less. Uh, my mortgage, a little less. Now my maintenance and tax is more or less the same. Uh, but what's changing is the is the is the mortgage because because the mortgage eighty thousand dollars less. So that you can see compare side by side. I compare that saves me about four hundred dollars four hundred dollars a month. But so my cost on this condo, the comments, my cost on this condo per month, the imaginary condo is twenty one forty six twenty one fifty a month, which is really cool. Um, the cost per bedroom, okay, there's only one bedroom here, so it's still the same. In the dollar per foot, I need to break even is four point two nine percent. Four dollars and twenty-nine cents. Uh, so still even higher than what I need in Toronto, and higher what I need obviously in uh, outside of Toronto because they're gonna pay less rent. Let's say I can get uh, seventeen fifty a month for this condo. So um, again, I'm I'm really like back to point zero because now I'm losing four hundred dollars a month again. Um, the question is, why am I buying this and the investment strategy? So if if this condo, and I'm just gonna like keep talking and make another one which is even cheaper just to, to show you. 500. We'll make them all one bedroom 500 just to kind of compare. And this one will be 350,000. Okay. And it's the same. And I'm saving another 200. Uh, in here. So, you know, um, if I'm getting 1750 like the other one, the buy a little cheaper. Okay. $200 a month negative cash flow. I, I, I can handle that. Okay. I can handle that. I can find a couple of bills to cut to make myself uh, that 200 bucks a month. You know, there's so many stupid payments that we pay. Just get rid of them. Okay, you don't need it. You really don't need anything besides your cell phone and internet. You don't need to pay for TV. You don't need to pay for Netflix. All these things. You just, I, I wouldn't do it. Just get rid of them. Okay, get rid of them. You can easily find 200 bucks a month to save you uh, this amount. There's many ways to do it. To extra 200 bucks a month, either save it or make it. But my point is that a thousand dollar foot, you know, even at high rents, um, it's still very, very difficult for me. And here I'm, I'm looking at 425 paying myself, right? 22. Difficult. Uh, here's 1750. Maybe I'm in Hamilton or whatever. I can, I'll get 1750 for this one bedroom. Difficult. Uh, here I got, I got a really good deal on the condo. It's the same condo, but I only paid uh, 350 on it. And I got uh, the same 1750. I'm barely, barely break even. So this, here's just some strategies. Okay, number one is buy cheaper. Number two is buy cheaper where you can find a higher return. So you got to find a really good area to buy. Um, and where would that be? That would be next to a school. Let's say next to the med school in Hamilton, or next to uh, Brantford has a bunch of schools and university uh, um, uh, schools that the universities uh, do there, or colleges. Those are always good, even across from a high school. Why? Because a school means a lot of jobs. The people that work at the school, they usually get paid really, really well, 80, 100, 120 on average. And the families or people that come in to study there, whether it's a college or a high school, which is a family, or maybe it's going to be um, 
just a student, a young student, and come in and, you know, sometimes they even split a one bedroom between two. So those start to make sense then, okay? Those start to make sense because you have guaranteed audience, you have guaranteed renters, you have guaranteed people that come in and, and live in this condo. So number one is try to get the lowest price you can. Number two is trying to get the highest rent you can, and that's really based on where that product is. Number three, of course, get really, really good floor plans. So, you know, there's hundreds and hundreds of floor plans uh, posted on my site. And I'll give you an example here, Nordic Condos, because I, I, there's a video about Nordic, but I go through all the floor plans. You can watch this video here and really learn how these floor plans help you. Because once you get a really good, so this is next to York University, and you can still pick up a three bedroom here um, for a reasonable price, under a thousand bucks a foot, and those actually can make you money, okay? According to my calculations, it's a high-tech building, cost on it will be low, it's very environmental, and you, you can see some floor plans. So, you know, once you buy the small floor plan here, um, that's going to be a challenge to break even unless you put a high deposit. Uh, but once you start getting to the two bedrooms and the three bedrooms, you just get right to it. Once you start, and sorry, it's like it's Friday today, it's really loud here, but it is what it is. Um, this is downtown Toronto for you. But once you get into the one plus den, the two bedrooms, especially if that den is large enough to throw a bed in, that means that two people can share. And if two people can share, you get two incomes, they can start supporting these condos. And this is where you get to the really nice units. These are really nice units here. These are fantastic units because it's perfect design. 562 square feet, two bedroom. That can make sense because if you buy this unit for, you know, 550, 600,000, you're gonna get very close to breaking even or even making some money, especially after the couple, first couple of years where you pay most of the interest on your mortgage, but then it goes more and more towards your capital that the numbers start to change. Once you start adding the capital appreciation back, the capital uh, payment, payback, and the capital appreciation back. But once you look at the three bedrooms, you, you know the numbers get even better because if you can get a, a decent three bedroom, it's still two, two, I'm just hitting the, forward button here okay so three bedrooms the three bedrooms start to make some sense because now the rents divided by three so once the rent divided by three you go you know what i can get three york students they're going to be there for three four or five years maybe it's a york a teacher or a ta you know they're doing a phd they're going to stay there for 10 years so you can have like a very stable place basically someone there maybe that phd student just stays there for five seven or ten years um, they may even run the house for you and basically just they get the master lease, they rent the, the rest of the rooms and it's all good. So that's that's something to do, okay? That's something to start considering. So that's an investment strategy I would look at is start looking at the numbers themselves and, you know, in the, in the old days, 5, 10, 20 years ago, we just all bought like tiny, tiny condos, the smallest we could. Now the smallest used to be 700 square feet, it was 6, and it was 5, now it's 4, now it's 350. Uh, below that's really a hotel room. Uh, but now we basically buy in two and three bedrooms in small sizes. You know, 560 square uh, feet, two bedroom. 650 square feet, three bedroom. That's what you're looking at. They're very, very tight, or two plus ten, but that's what you're going to need in order to start breaking even and making money on these investments. Okay. Um, there's also these commercial properties that you can buy. I'm not sure if they're left right now, but you can ask me. But to me, uh, they're very reasonably priced, and probably people don't understand what they are. But imagine you have a storefront or a retail or an office in a building with, you know, a thousand or two thousand people living there. I mean, that's guaranteed business. <laughs> that's guaranteed business because you can just go there and, you know, you have captive audience for your business. So those are really good. The worksheet's right here, by the way. So these are really good, but it is becoming harder and harder to find small units that are going to pay um, this kind of stuff because you want to buy a small unit at low dollar a foot. That's why it's time to get out of Toronto. I spoke to you about this. Uh, should we buy outside of Toronto? Should we buy in Hamilton? And I reviewed, and you know, Hamilton, Niagara, Kitchener, Waterloo, Toronto versus outside GTA. 